locked in. Look at what we have here, folks. To the only show that matters. The cream of the crop. Duke loves wrestling. And there is no one that does it better than your host. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. The Duke. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Oh my god oh jesus <laughs> really is this where we're going now? that's right my brother who is that who is that I- i'm guessing it's jeff sessions no what are you talking about oh, man? that's joey <laughs> styles jeff sessions <laughs> can we redo that over <laughs> no, no, uh, <laughs> no we're not gonna redo that oh, over come Listen, on the boston bad I boy was wa- all right can i just say i was watching CNN. Uh, CNN is on in the background in our as we have in our multimedia center here. Yeah, and they were talking about Jeff Sessions about being appointed to Trump's cabinet. Unreal. And of course, I'm not even paying attention to you as I normally do. Well, listen, uh, Joey Styles. There's no way. Can I'm you do a Jeff ever. Sessions impression? No, I can't. Well, that would be really. <laughs> we, we'd get yanked off the air for that one, folks. Welcome back to Duke Loves Wrestling. I am the Duke. And yes, I do enjoy doing pro wrestler impersonations. Yeah, right. Not not uh, uh, a government official. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I don't know <laughs> what's going on with our illustrious co-host, the Boston Bad. You know, it's here. been a long day. I was at a movie premiere last night. Yes, and uh, you know, went late. I, you know, me and Beyonce and Jay Z went oh, to the after party, see? and uh, boy, like the sun was coming up, and I don't know. I was just really tired. I had some coffee, but. And then I'm trying to watch the news because it's more interesting than you, and oh, I'm getting all confused. This guy, once again, he's putting himself over, and then forget about me. Now, folks, you know we we, we do want to give some love to the Boston bad boy. He he made his uh, producer and and what is it? Yeah, well, co-directorial uh, well, writing, debut, writing, uh, producing, wow. uh, editing. We did a you know a group. It was a group project. Jack of all trades. That's right. So we all worked on it, but I uh, did some visual effects stuff. Unbelievable. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll bring some of that movie magic to the uh, Duke Love. Hey, we podcast. may have to. We might have to, yeah. Your movie debuted at a theater. That's right, at uh, the Regent Theater here in uh, in Massachusetts. Unbelievable. So yeah, that was good. This is a man so, who has uh, some talents here. It was he, a lot of fun. He doesn't want to show his talents here, but yeah, maybe, you know, he maybe, can go uh, elsewhere. Duke loves wrestling the movie is wow. in the future. Can you imagine? Yeah. Can I mean, we, we can we get uh, Airman Grove on for that? Oh, boy. <laughs> He'll, he can be the key grip. That would be fantastic. <laughs> Listen, before we get to any of the, the, the good stuff here, I got to bring something up. Uh-oh. I got to bring something up. And, and you know, I, I, I was going to hold back, but you know something, Boston bad boy? Oh, boy. This isn't going to, like, cause me physical harm. Well, right? I'm going to get to my person. It may, but... It better not. I'm, I'm going to pat myself on the back. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I'm, As usual. As I'm going to pat myself on the back here. Let me let me tell you folks a story here, some behind the scenes things, just so you understand what's you know some of the nonsense I got to deal with sometimes. Yeah, okay, go ahead. A couple of weeks back, we had our friend, the pastor of wrestling, Mister Kevin West. Yep, he joined us here on the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast, and we were discussing Ric Flair and the importance, the significance of a Ric Flair promo. Correct. Right. It was fantastic, and we actually played a Ric Flair. Uh, a clip of a Rip, Ric Flair promo. Um, oh, I think I think we got it right here. Uh-oh. Now, Buddy Landell, it's so hard for me to sit back here in this studio looking at a guy out here hollering my name <laughs> I love when this. last <laughs> year I spent more money on spilt liquor <laughs> in bars from one side of this world to the other than you made. You're talking to the Rolex wearing... <laughs> Diamond ring wearing, kiss stealing, woo, wheeling, dealing, limousine riding, jet flying, <laughs> son of a gun, and I'm having a hard time holding these alligators down. Okay. Uh, woo. 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 So we, we played that. <laughs> Can we, we get to play that. that? We should listen to that before the show. Dude, just it just get gets you get, get, pumped yeah. up, right? Fantastic. Everyone knows about it. Every athlete and, and, and rapper and, and everybody And we loves discussed that. the importance of a good promo. Yes, we sure did. Now, we, we attributed the promo to Ric Flair. That's right. We talked about the WWE. Correct. Who is the owner of the content. Yeah. And in fact, I even encourage people to go to WWE.com, go to the network, yeah. and look up that promo and They're listen right, to it. Because they right? get everything. They got everything. Right. It's fantastic. Shout out to, to WWE Network. We love it. Subscribe to it. It's fantastic. Great. 
Well, I get a message from Warner Music Group, <laughs> the record company. <laughs> this is a good story. Okay. So, you know, we have the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast episodes. You know, we put it on iTunes, the the, the most recent episodes. Yep. But we archive the entire show on YouTube. Yep. I and get a message. So to do that, uh, to explain a little bit of the, the boring technical back end, YouTube's a video service. So we take the audio and we put up a still image so that YouTube thinks it's looking at a video, but you can just pop it on and listen to it. it ha- people do it all the time. Absolutely. Different types of content. Absolutely. The, the main idea is to make it as accessible as possible That's for right. you, the listeners, right? Warner Music Group has some kind of bot, for lack of a better term, some kind of listening computer. Uh, computer that listens out for things, and when they hear something that's not on one of their YouTube accounts, but it sounds like it's part of a song that Warner Music Group owns, they flag it. And then they dispute it. So I get a message saying that uh, they're disputing my use of the Ric Flair promo. Which, which is funny, not to stop you, but it might happen again with this episode. I hope it does. I hope it does. <laughs> so they disputed. Yeah. So basically what you're saying is their bot picked up the Ric Flair promo in, in us discussing it and mm-hmm. talking to the pastor about it. Mm-hmm. Someone had sampled that in a song that Warner owns or yes. represents they have the publishing for Meek, or whatever. Meek Mill, the rapper. Meek Mill. Meek Mill. Yes, he, right. he's, he's dating Nicki Minaj. That's his biggest Sorry claim to hear to fame, it. by the way. Sorry uh, to hear it. He, that's his biggest claim to fame. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah. His second biggest claim mm-hmm. to fame is that... He's uh, ripping off Ric Flair? Yeah. It, yeah. Well, thank okay. you very thank much. You very much. Right. Okay? So so this guy samples Ric Flair's uh, spilt liquor promo. Yeah. Okay? Doesn't give Ric Flair any royalties for it. Now, do we know this? We know. I know this for a fact because Ric Flair's quoted as stating it on his podcast and in interviews. He's been asked numerous times, and he says okay. he's never seen a dime from any rapper. The que- All right. So... Um, who so WWE owns the promo because it was it was done under, as one of their promotions. Now keep in mind what you just said. Owns. 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 Okay. How can you collect anything from me when you don't own the content? Right. So they came. They heard. They the, the, our podcast gets flagged. Yes. And Warner comes to you and says, yes. they "You say, owe us money because you're using the Ric Flair promo that we don't even own." That we don't. Now here's but here's how we can we can settle this. This is what Warner says to me. Yeah. You can keep it up, yeah, and you can keep using it, but we have to be allowed to play advertisements on your video. So let me get this straight. Yep. Warner Music Group, who doesn't own the Ric Flair promo, mm-hmm. who's one of their artists used it under questionable circumstances, questionable circumstances, are now wanting to put an advertisement on our podcast because we're discussing Ric Flair yep. as a news item yes. and using actualities to tell our story. So we're, we're legally above, above board here. Oh, absolutely. And they're way below board. No, it, right. Because we're not, you know, we don't go out and, and, and claim that that's ours or we invented it. In fact, we made sure that's we right. attributed the content right. to the Absolutely. rightful owner. That's right. And the rightful creator of the content. That's right. And we're a news program, so we can, like like CNN can play a clip. Absolutely. If they're talking about Ric Flair and they play that promo, yep. they're good, and so are we. Yep. Uh, and so that's the most absurd thing i've ever heard isn't in my it ridiculous life. so so this is a hustle that they have going on absolutely so we don't want you to take it down but we're going to put our ads on it so right. anytime anyone listens and, and what have you we get paid well this is what that. happens with everybody posts music on youtube uh, elton john yep you can go click on youtube right now and find uh, goodbye yellow brick road by elton john mm-hmm. that someone's posted illegally absolutely but what the record companies have done is just said the only way they can combat it is by saying you can leave it up, but we're going to put advertising yep. on it. Yep, that's the new thing. Now, that makes sense to me, I guess. If you can't just eliminate it, because how many videos are uploaded at a time? But don't come to us. Yes. Who are, you know... We're and, news. Well, how ma- I want to know how often this happens with a 60 Minutes podcast, when they're talking about, you know, who else has been famously sampled in, in music? There are other quotes and movie quotes and things that are in music, mm-hmm. uh, whether they got permission originally to use it in the music or not. And so... <laughs> Who is the litigation department for Warner Brothers that's chasing these dead ends? And what balls they have. At, at, hello. <laughs> to say, not to say take it down. Yeah. Hey, by the way, we don't even own this. Yep. But uh, maybe you should take it down anyway. It, this was not like a It serv- wasn't even maybe. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even maybe. Either take it down or let us put our ads up there. So. That's it. 
So I fired back a response, as you do, and and I and you know it was a very serious response. Yep. I said, you know, first of all, this is a news program, okay, and even the context of the Ric Flair promo, we were speaking about it in the context of news, okay. We were analyzing the promo. That's right. We attributed it to the rightful owner and the rightful creator. Right. So that's that's first of all. Second of all, don't you ever send me a ridiculous message <laughs> like this again. And if you do, yeah, I will personally contact the WWE and let them know that you right. are illegally using their content. Or and, well, not they may have rights. I think they may have they may have had got clearance from to use it in the song initially. They don't, but own they it. don't have right. They don't have the rights to then keep, make money on it forever more. Well, they don't own it. They can't tell somebody right. else they can't use the same content. Right. For exactly. any reason, right? Exactly, right. They, right. right. They don't. They don't. Yeah. So, so this is the thing. I told them, don't ever do it again. Well, this happened uh, in in uh, Getty Images. There was a, a case. This woman who was a photographer, hmm. famous photographer, and I think in her estate, or she may still be alive. I don't want to <laughs> say someone isn't, but basically, she made her her work public domain, that anybody could use it. So uh, some people used it in some projects. And got a cease and desist letter and a bill from Getty Images, which is a service that provides stock photos for and they the newspaper. Even, oh, boy. Here's the thing. Yep. Getty Images, you could go to Getty Images and pay to use those mm -hmm. if you didn't know you could get them for free. That doesn't mean Getty owns all the use of it. Exactly. No matter what. Exactly. And this is sort of the exact same thing. Yep. Yep. And I believe that the whole thing with, with them was they said you can't you know, you can't do yeah. that. So yeah. I, I feel like we're you know, we're on the right side of history with this, but I also think it's funny that you might be talking to a robot because I think those emails might be the original, at least the initial emails, yep. are generated by a computer because there's, there must be millions of no, them. No, I don't. I don't think so. At all. I, I think that the the robot flagged it, and right. then and then you think somebody looked at somebody it? from Warner Music Group, and, and, and I don't possibly think so. I think the initial contact and possibly Meek Mill, the rapper, because he has a problem with the Duke. <laughs> I think that he lost yeah, his that's mind. It. Yeah. And decided that he was going to try to mess with me because he knows that I've been saying that, hey, Drake is a better rapper than him and Meek right. is, is, Listen, is I, I can't he's no Rick Ross now. or Jay-Z, whatever. I can't get into that. Here's my wallet. point. Uh, I sent my response, and they had 30 days to respond to my response, and they read it. And guess what? What? They let the 30 days expire. So what did, what did YouTube say to me? What? You're all set. You got no problems. It well, stays up. How many people don't fight back? Well, how many people aren't the Duke? <laughs> so, so let me let me thankfully, tell you something. Thankfully, most people aren't the Duke. I don't know if I could deal with that. I'm telling Warner Music Group, yeah, and I'm telling Meek Mill once again: Don't you ever in your life send me nonsense like that again, okay? I'm not even going to mention the name of the song that you had with the Ric Flair sample in there because it's not even worth mentioning. But don't you ever send me nonsense like that again, okay, Jack? You know because, why? Why? You're talking to the Rolex wearing, diamond ring wearing, kiss stealing, woo, wheeling dealing, limousine riding, jet flying, son of a gun, and I'm having a hard time holding these alligators down. And you can take that to the bank, Jack. So here's my question. What's Ric Flair up to uh, these past uh, couple Rick weeks? Ric Flair's doing great things, man. Yeah. You know, he has a he has a great podcast yep. with Conrad Thompson. Shout out to my man, hey hey Conrad on on Twitter, Conrad Thompson. You know, Ric Flair, uh, he he was in Boston a couple weeks ago to see his daughter retain uh, win back the women's championship no, that's right, right. at Hell in the Cell. So he came down. He Absolutely. was down for that. Absolutely. You know, Ric Flair is the man, and and, and we love Ric Flair, and and I stay in constant contact with his, his uh, best friend Conrad Thompson. That's right. Uh, just to keep up with what Flair is yeah. doing. Because I'd I'm be fan. interesting to know if Conrad or uh, Rick have a, a comment on this whole thing with Warner Brothers because, uh, you know, like I said, Rick has mentioned that he doesn't, you know... He hasn't seen a dime seen, from, yeah. from these folks. So yeah. it's interesting that I wonder if... W wouldn't it be funny if somehow he gets flagged from his own podcast well, this is with the it, thing. in his own voice? This is the thing I was thinking about <laughs> myself. Because he must have played that um, his own promo during his show. Absolutely, he plays his own stuff all the time. That's absolutely. Right. Because absolutely. he's Rick Flair. Yeah. Why wouldn't you play your so own you promos imagine, on your show? Can you imagine... <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, what I would love to see is the letter that Ric Flair sent to them. Which I'm is sure probably Ric Flair much... would go to their house. I'm sure Ric Flair would show up at their offices and chew them out. That's pretty funny because he's Ric Flair. I'd, I'd love to see it. Oh my God! That I'd pay to see. Listen, I, I'll tell another quick funny story. Do it. There was a wrestler 
who made a joke about Flair. It was an off-color joke. All right. And Flair said, I'd love to have him say that to my face. In fact, I'm going to see him uh, this weekend, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make him say that to my face. Yeah. So then, you know, the next weekend he said, he apologized to me. <laughs> to his face. Now, Flair is 67 years old. Uh, are you kidding me? And the guy he was talking to was like in his early 30s. I, I wouldn't. Apologize to I'd Flair immediately. Of course. Okay. Ric Flair once walked across the room and punched Mick Foley in the face. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, 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 just to... Just, just to lay down the law? Just got up and punched him just, in the face. Just because. And Foley didn't know what to do. <laughs> well, he was so shocked that Ric Flair react? punched him in the face in the locker room. Like just, it's a great just story, it. though. There was one day I was sitting there, and Ric Flair just got up and punched me in the face. It's awesome. So, you know, Flair is not one to play with. No. And, and the Duke is not one to play with Warner Music Group and Meek Mill. Don't ever send me <laughs> nonsense like that again. Okay. <laughs> It's time to run the ropes. I'd give my opinion on the top five stories in the world of professional wrestling. Let's go. WrestleStar 3 is this Friday and Saturday. That's right, folks. According to MiddleKingdomWrestling.com and KingdomWrestlingFederation.com, WrestleStar 3 will be happening live at the Patea World Boxing Stadium in Thailand. Now, that's the two-day wrestling extravaganza going on November 18th and 19th. You'll get to see Mephisto destroy that no-good Tyra. Listen, Tyra made it clear to me that she's not happy that I'm rooting for Mephisto. And I tried to explain to her, listen, Mephisto will destroy me, so I better cheer for her because I don't want her to bite me. Okay? Now, we're also going to see Aramir show why he's still the chief. Big Sam bringing the Big Sam bomb. Even the biggest movie star around, Ash, he's going to be on the card. Okay? Check it out if you're in Thailand. Enjoy. The Undertaker returns to WWE TV. Yes, folks, according to WWE.com and as seen on SmackDown, The Undertaker made his return. Not, not only did he appear on camera, but he threatened Team SmackDown and told them whomever loses at Survivor Series would personally get handled by The Taker. Stay tuned to see how this is going to play out. I think The Undertaker is probably on a collision course with AJ Styles. We'll see. Joey Styles fired by Evolve. Yes, folks, unfortunately, according to PWIinsider.com, Joey Styles, he actually penned a letter himself, and he admits fault making an inappropriate Donald Trump joke during an Evolve independent wrestling pay-per-view. Now, look. This incident, unfortunately, resulted in numerous other promotions blackballing Joey Styles from working with them again in the foreseeable future. Is this an overreaction or did Joey get what he deserved? Personally, I'll say this. Joey was told not to make the joke and he ignored that direction and still made the joke. So, you know, he, he deserved to get fired from that promotion, but he apologized. I don't feel that he deserves to be blackballed for the rest of his foreseeable career. Joey, I respect you. You made a mistake. You owned up to it. I accept it. And hey, we're pulling for you, brother. We'll see what happens there. NXT TakeOver still has tickets available. That's right, folks. According to Ticketmaster.com, tickets are still available for NXT TakeOver Toronto. Now, this is the pay-per-view happening live from the Air Canada Centre this Saturday, November 19th. The main event is champion Shinsuke Nakamura taking on Samoa Joe. Now, look, folks, you got to check this one out. And I expect whomever loses this match will go on a Survivor Series and make a surprise appearance. Stay tuned. Will Brock Lesnar defeat Goldberg? Folks, this is the question on everyone's mind as the main event for Survivor Series is Bill Goldberg taking on the beast Brock Lesnar. Now, according to BleacherReport.com, Brock Lesnar will defeat Goldberg, and this will be a hard-hitting battle for both individuals. As logical as this is, I personally don't see it, okay? My money is on the loser of the Nakamura Samoa Joe match at NXT, they're going to interfere in this match. They're going to leave both men bloody and beat up. This will create a situation where you have more uh, action coming on to end the year and go into uh, next year's WrestleMania. Hopefully it's, it's Nakamura, because can you imagine 
Brock Lesnar and Nakamura, King of Strong Style versus The Beast. That would be an amazing WrestleMania card, and you can get the ball rolling right here at Survivor Series by having Nakamura interfere in that match. We'll see what happens. You've heard what I think. What do you think? Do you think I'm crazy? Do you think I'm right? Head over to Facebook. Head over to Twitter. Type in Duke Loves Wrestling. Let me know. Up next, I got him. I challenged him, and he's here. Tell us, Cade. He can do it to a concert that just don't care, but one thing I do care about is Duke's wrestling. And I got what the guy has nothing but love for the business. Last week, we had TWE star and former Texas junior heavyweight champion Rudy Russo on. I mean, man, he talked about everything from being trained by Chavo Guerrero Sr., a.k.a. Chavo Classic. Talked about his dog. He even talked about his patient girlfriend, Jennifer. Head over to uh, YouTube or even iTunes. Look up Week 30, and you can hear that Rudy Russo interview. This week, we have the man that I laid a challenge against, okay? I challenge this man to come to the show and tell me to my face, uh, or rather, my ears, all the stuff he's been saying about me online. <laughs> now, mind you, this guy is a solid wrestler. He has a strong fan following, and I'm pretty sure he can beat me up. But nonetheless, I'm still going to challenge him. I don't care what the Boston bad boy says. So without further ado, please welcome Tellus Cade. How are you, Tellus? Well, now i now ready to talk some drop kicks out on you. Uh -oh. I heard you say last week about me, man. I heard you say last week. Oh, I told Already, you, man. Duke. Oh, man. No, I told you, Duke. I told you to quit running your mouth, and this was going to happen, and I'm glad it finally did. This is ridiculous. No, 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 no. Let him run his mouth. I shut it for him. Oh. <laughs> oh. Listen, awesome. I didn't, I didn't expect a, a, a handicap match between uh, Tellus Cade and the Boston bad boy against me here. What's going on right now? Hey, man. Ain't no rules in fighting. No, oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's right. Street fight. Yeah, this, this is getting out of hand, folks. I, I don't know what's – you know – Tell us, you took offense to all the things that I say. I just want to let you know that Vince McMahon is right. Most of the time, no matter what oh, happens, Jesus. he is correct. And I'm going to defend Vince McMahon. I don't care how many drop kicks you give me. Okay, okay, I give you that. Mm -hmm. man, he, he's made a fortune and totally changed the business around since he came into it. That's right. But the man ain't, all, but the man ain't always right. Uh -oh. Okay, Let's call a spade a spade here. And man, the man ain't always right. I don't care. I don't care how much money he got. He ain't God. <laughs> wow, <laughs> it's true. You know what? He is. You know what? He is God in 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 Duke's world. He's God. I think. I I can't well, believe that you're agreeing with the Boston bad boy. I I can't believe this. You know. Well, well you know, once upon a time, the Greeks believed in Zeus. <laughs> we saw we saw what happened there, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what? We're getting off track here because you guys are all over me. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna move this along here. Tell us, you're a guy who who broke into the wrestling business in the Texas territory. Correct. What is it? What is it about Texas that uh, produces so many quality wrestlers and 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 who have made such a strong impact on the business? Well, Texas is really the history of Texas. Uh, each, you know. As you know, Texas is a pretty big state, mm -hmm. and each uh, city has its own like following. You had the uh, Von Erichs in the Dallas area, and, you, and and then with that you had Gino Hernandez. You had you had all those guys in Sportatorium. You know, my trainer was from the Sportatorium. He trained me. He came from the Sportatorium. Mm. The uh, and San Antonio, you had the Blanchards. You know, and and you had those guys down there with uh, basically. After that, the, the, I tell you, had the uh, four horse come from the decks with the Blanchers and whatnot with Tully, and then um, Houston. I don't know much about Houston, but I do know that uh, Booker T down there is down there now from Houston. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's from there. So uh, he started down there. So that tells you about how Texas has a really, really deep history of wrestling. No, that goes back uh, some some thirty, forty years now. That's absolutely true, and in fact. Even when you were breaking in, I, I know that um, within a year of you breaking into the business, you got a chance to take a look at somebody who was going by the name of uh, Athena, the wrestling goddess. Now, yes. 
she was making her bones and what have you. And in fact, now she's in WWE NXT as Ember Moon. What, what was your Correct. impression of, of, of uh, Ember Moon back then when she was Athena? Well, I know her personally, you know, kind of knew her only as a train partner. Uh, one time gave her a pretty big spine buster. Oh, you know, that's pretty cool. <laughs> but, uh, but, um, but, but even then though, she took it like a, like a champ, you know, she didn't cry about just being the, cause she's a girl. She, hey, hell, most of the time she, I worked the guys, but, um, I, she came, started training with us, uh, I guess for extra time in the ring. And that really is kind of indicative of, of kind of her drive, you know, she invested in herself from day one in this business. And had nothing but I, I, no nothing but good things to say about her. She she did her dues, she paid her dues, and she uh, made a name for herself in this business, which is really hard to do for her, especially a black female. Mm. And now she's on TV, you know, and it's kind of like her just deserves. She deserves all all success she gets. I'm very proud to say I, I've known her even a little bit. Wow, well, definitely a shout out to. Uh the goddess of wrestling Athena, AKA Ember Moon. She, she, I expect her to win that uh, NXT women's championship in the not too distant future. Cause she's fantastic. You know, tell us, you brought up, you brought up an interesting point. Cause you, you said that um, as a back black female, it's, it's good to see what she's doing there. Let me ask you a question here. And, and this is a big elephant in the room that a lot of folks like to shy away from. Uh, because they, they get a little nervous and you start talking about race. But, hey, we're going to talk about it here on the Duke Loves Wrestling Show. Pro wrestling okay. has such a, a vast and rich history with a long line of, of world champions, right? But one of the most right, right. one of the most uncommon occurrences is to have a, a black man as the world champion of a major promotion. Now, Correct. we've seen guys like Sailor Art Thomas who... who you know, he was the first black world heavyweight champion in the WWA territory back in the early 70s. Uh, it didn't happen again until 20 years later when Ron Simmons won the WCW world title in, in 1992. And in fact, when you go through history, you can count on two hands and still have fingers left over in terms of uh, black world heavyweight champions. My question to you, tell us, is what is that about in the wrestling business? Why have we seen so few black world heavyweight champions? Well, it's a lot of reasons why, but the main reason is uh, wrestling is a business, really. And the primary audience, for lack of a better term, are white people. And, um, you know, uh, the audience is white people, so, so like, it's kind of like Marvel superheroes, kind of. You don't see too many black superheroes. You have a couple, but the majority of them are white people. It's kind of like that. You kind of say the same parallels there. Uh, the audience is uh, white people, and so you have white protagonists. Same thing with wrestling. Do you feel that uh, the audience would rather see someone that looks more like them, and that has oh, something to do with it? Of course, of course. Uh, people like like envisioning them themselves being the, the hero, triumphing over evil. And, um, you know, uh, and then it's also the fact that while I was training and whatnot, um, one of my trainers on the side and told me uh, they're going to pay to see a black um, heavyweight champion. Wow. And he didn't say that as a way to, uh, to like, uh, to, like, you know, I guess, deterred me he said in a way to motivate me to work harder and be better than them so he can't deny me like they can like the rock basically oh wow work hard so, so he can't deny you wow he, he, um, your trainer and, said to you that they're not going to pay to see a, a black world heavyweight champion yeah they want to be like whatever heavyweight champion wow. that's, what my, that's what my trainers told me and um and he would know you know my, my trainers i've been fortunate enough to been around guys who my trainers have all been Got some around for at least twenty to thirty years, all of them, all ones I listened to for advice and spoke with, with about uh, progression and in, in the industry and the waste and stuff out there. They don't want to see a black heavyweight champion. That's deep. That's deep. Uh, now, me, I think it's because because the audience is white audience and 
they want to see someone who, someone who someone who like looks like them be the hero, which you know I understand. How much and, of that and, has to do with the promoter? Because uh, you know wrestling is predetermined, so you you have right, a right. you could have a booking committee, but really whoever is in charge of the pro wrestling promotion is going to determine who the winners and the losers are. So does the promoter have any any kind of uh, hand in this concept here? I think some some blame can be put on promoters. Um, and the reason why I say that is because uh, they have to create better, for lack of a better word, gimmicks for these um, black wrestlers. It's only until recently they saw guys branch out and start being more reality-based. Where in the past, you have black guys who are either thugs, or black guys who, you know, the angry black man stereotype, or, you know, they wore jeans and everything, like our truth You know, they weren't, you know, it's the hip-hop thing. And not all black people are that way. Some black people like myself love tradition. I wrestled in trunks and boots, mm. you know. I was, I'm not a stereotypical black person. And and very few, and very few black people are, really. But um, that's kind of what, what it is. They want, they sell stereotypes. And that's the nature of the business. You sell stereotypes. You know, it's it's interesting that you that you say that. Um, is it changing? Do you when you when you take a look at what has happened up to this point, and you take a look at and you compare that to wrestling today? You know, 2016 going into 2017. Are we seeing a shift where where? attitudes toward black wrestlers being just a stereotype just the you know the shucking and jiving dancing fool or the thug or what have you is that changing or or, or do you see that still happening to this day i think it's changing uh, look at guys like a uh, like new day new day are probably similar to my personality you know um and then you have tv shows like uh atlanta for example that have smart writing that is feature black people who aren't stereotypical at all. Actually, they are stereotypical, but not in a way that white people think we're stereotypical. Um, and even even with the wrestler sizes, and you first see it started with the re- size of the wrestlers. Guys in the nineties were like, you know, you're a small if you're six thirty. Um, you're two you're two thirty uh, six one. You're a small guy. Nowadays, a lot of guys are considered big that that, that that size and weight. Look at uh look at uh. Ben Baylor, mm. he's like what five nine, five mm-hmm. ten, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe one eighty, one eighty five, and then you had guys like CM Punk, he won two twenty, he was maybe one ninety, and and he was like six feet, six one, had a and had a, had a title for a year. Outside of Shawn Michaels, that'll, ne- that'll never happen back back um back then. Nowadays, you, know, you got Seth Rollins, you got all these small guys who are leading the way, whereas in the past. You know, if you if you weren't six two two sixty, hell, like good luck with that shit. Yeah, I I, I definitely no. I, I agree with you there as far as size. Uh, hopefully, changing things for the better. Uh, can I just jump yeah. in real quick because I, if I, as the token white guy in this conversation, uh oh, <laughs> I, I was interested. Uh-oh. I was interested. In what you were saying about the audience and the, your little your connection with the superhero movies, which I think is a great analogy. So, do do you think that it? that wrestling as a promotion, as a business, does not do enough to reach out to diverse communities, and that's why, so that there's no fuel to fuel a champion that looks different than the status quo? That's a good point, because uh, if you look at it, like, uh, growing up, right, um, you know, Little Tell Cade in the Dallas, Texas, uh, I first used to rock on TV, mm-hmm. and I tell my, my friends, I'm going to be a wrestler. They first, they first, and my friends are all black now. You, you know, your friends with who? Your friends with people in your own culture. Sure. That's, that's, most, most, most of the time is how I work. I don't have any friends, so, so <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to take, take that, uh, that you know what you're talking about. But, but, uh, but anyway, though, uh, so to my, my black friends, I'm be, I'm be a rush rider up. They all laughed at me. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, fast forward a couple years later, I'm in, I'm in high school. I'm looking up wrestling schools to try to go to, and then. Then things weren't as easy to find. I couldn't just go on Twitter or Google and find, you know, hell, Google wasn't even around yet. <laughs> um, you know, tell friends, I'm a wrestler. Y'all laugh at me. Man, man, man that's a fake. You know? So I think a lot of it is the the, the culture doesn't really 
like wrestling in the first place. Well, it, it's interesting. So, it's interesting that you say that, but you know, you see a guy like The Rock. That one, that one person that was uh, in the organization. How many, uh, you know, uh, uh, wrestlers did he inspire? Or young people coming up, people like you, people who, yeah, of people who, are, who it isn't really even aimed at from the corporate level. He inspires you yeah. to jump into a game that it's still not aimed at you. So, right. where, where do you think that? I'm just curious if you, if, you know, having worked in it, what do you think? Is there an in somewhere? Where does it have to start? Because like you said, think, you know, w w there, people want to envision themselves. You were able to do that with right. The Rock. So is it a matter of we need more people that more people can envision, and that builds the audience, or do you have to build the audience first? Is you know, chicken or the egg? You need uh, the chicken first, I believe. We had the egg. <laughs> All right. Um, and I, I say that because, uh, for example, let's, let's take it back to 80s and 70s with Hulk Hogan. Yep. All right. He, he was once in a lifetime... Um, draw, and he and, and business changed, you know, you know, fundamentally, ever since he uh, wrestled. Guys are getting bigger paydays. Guys, can, it's going to be on national TV. Uh, it's going to be on cable, have pay per views now, and everything. All this doesn't want up. Fast for a couple more years, you have another um, it factor. Stone Cold. Mm -hmm. it, it emerges the it, it, Al emerges from that the anti hero. Now everyone is trying to be the cool heel. They, they realize they don't have to be the uh, white meat baby face to get over. Right. They can be themselves, basically, and get over. Uh, a couple years go by, you have The Rock comes out. And he and he personified, he came out being the cool black guy. And, um, my, they didn't they play out the, they play up his black heritage on TV. He played up his more heritage more so. Mm -hmm. But his it factor inspired a lot of people. So, I think he's my else one. I was it factor to come out to inspire, basically. That, and the it factor is so hard to find. You see now, they don't try to find it anymore. Mm. They mm. don't try to find it. That's a problem. I mean, I saw John Cena, and it's arguable that he has it or not. Because you never heard, you very rarely heard Chance, doing Chance, like, Cena sucks, because, uh, let's call Cena, with The Rock or Stone Cold. You never heard those kind of chance with them. So, you know? I guess, so you're saying it, it's sort of a really elusive thing, because no matter what your, let's say, race is, just to find someone with the it factor of any race is difficult, Never mind finding yeah. a, a strong uh, black uh, sort of person to put on that pedestal that has the it factor, that is an effective champion, and also now then speaks to, you know, the audience. Correct. Um, the it factor, like, like you probably name like one hand and folks the it factor. Right. And and then and and those, and those people and one of them, one of those people have um, black heritage in them. Right, exactly. So, so right, so right. How 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 hard is it to find in a pool of a hundred people? You know, the one person has the it factor, and is does that person happen to also have another quality you need? You know, to to, to appeal to an audience. I think that's, that's right. That's that's interesting. Yeah, that's and and, and, and business evolves so much now that no one guy needs the it factor anymore. Not the show itself sells it, so you don't need it the it guy, the it, the guy anymore. Now you have uh, thanks social media and things. Uh, more minorities are getting are getting the, you know exposed to wrestling. That who wouldn't see who wouldn't see it normally? People are turn turn the memes and stuff, and that I mean it's kind of no, no it's kind of funny tongue in cheek ha 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 let's turn rock into a meme or a turn you know but that kind of makes people like explore a little bit about it googling and, well, oh this is kind of cool yeah and it's so much it. so much in spite of uh, you know say the company WWE not specifically targeting that audience it's organically happening through social media yeah. anyway friends of friends of friends and sharing this thing so it's sort of one way or the other it's you know it's going to find its way there but you know whether yeah, they put someone there on top or or not so let me ask you this exactly. then tell us since we we've brought it to that point where we're talking about the the memes and 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 this organic thing that's rising uh to the top here when is the next time we're going to see a black world heavyweight champion uh i think pretty soon not and i, I think now it's going to happen because WWE is going from from true world world heavyweight championships they're going now to universal championships and WWE universe champions do you so technically so technically that's not a world champion technically they don't have one anymore so I think that, that that branding itself will make it a little different. 
Do you think, you know, it's funny, you know, the white audience never had to demand a champion, never had to look for something that wasn't there. Do you think that the new audience, uh, a minority audience, let's say, uh, do you think they're going to have to be vocal about wanting a specific champion? Or do you think, you know, it's just going to happen if they show up? I think it's going to happen because uh, you look at the next generation, who's the rank, who's going to get the keys to the kingdom? More likely it's going to be Steph and um, Hunter, you know, Triple H. Uh, and they are already doing, you know, things that are experienced, basically, in NXT. You know, look at look at the women. Look at uh, last thing, last Raw. Bailey chance um, paused the whole segment because she was so over. Well, last time woman has been that over. Yeah. I don't think even Trish, I don't think even Trish was that over. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Bailey is uh, she's is of Hispanic heritage. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So and, and Sasha, you know, mm-hmm. you know, so it's only a matter of time because of Triple H and Stephanie are, I think, literally trying to find that new that new appeal. They realize that the world is changing. And I think the next 20 or 30 years will be really, some pretty cool stuff going to happen in regards to that. Wow, that's that's definitely uh, hopeful stuff, and, and that sounds great. You know, it, it'll be great to continue to be a wrestling fan and see all of this develop because, hey, every, every kid wants to see somebody that looks like them be the right. superhero, the real-life superhero, the real-life action and, figure. You and know? That's, kind of, that's kind of what put drew me to wrestling. Um, when I was little... My uh, Superman was The Rock, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, because mm-hmm. uh, you know, comic comic book wise, you know, I had you know maybe uh, uh, no Black Panther or you know, um, or I had a War Machine, but you know, those guys weren't invincible. To me, The Rock was my superhero. I used to tune in to Raw and SmackDown every day. It came on just to see you know The Rock because you know, I was a little kid. <clears throat> pretty pretty undersized at the time, you know, and I, I saw the guys like, hey, they got they guys tough. No one messes with him. Do you think that's kind? Of, sorry, go ahead. You finish. With me. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I, I cut you off. But I, I was just going to ask, do you think that wrestling has it in itself to spearhead the change or to just be reactionary to the eventual change? that's sort of happening in, in this country and just overall in the next 30 years, do you think that they'll be able to sort of be ahead of the wave as they have on other trends? Or do you think that they're sort of doomed to just be reactionary? reactionary? Well, you know, well, the audience is, you know, 60%, you know, uh, minority now, and, and you know, which makes no sense, but <laughs> you know what I mean? So we have to put somebody, or are they going to sort of lead the charge and build it for themselves? What do you think? I think it depends, because uh, look at TNA. They're not guys kind of spearheaded that they use on Divas Division. True. You know? And, I mean, it's arguable with that without them, uh, TNA taking their, their, their women wrestlers seriously, that they uh, never would have. True. Sure. So, you know, I think it's going to cause some outside influence for the biggest stages of the uh, big stage to do so. Um, now, that, and I think that it might come from regular honor having Jay Lethal as the champion. That might. Help us push it a little because uh, Jay Lethal's not stereotypical at all. He's a great wrestler. Yeah, he's um he's not very charismatic sometimes, but he's he's a great wrestler. He uh you watch him. He, his, I can't say I can't, can't ever say I saw a bad match of his, even when he was doing the uh, Macho Lethal thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't ever say I saw a bad match of his ever. So I think that's going to spearhead a lot of stuff, and I think that they're going to be reactionary only because. So many different stages are doing it already. Yeah, they, they the last thing that they want, uh, they being WWE, is to have another organization be ahead of the curve and then jump ahead of them because they're giving the people what they want now as opposed to what right. people used to want. Because, you know, our, our taste change just in general with any product, right. with any form of entertainment but with such a big with such a big organization as they are and all these subsidiaries now and only getting more complex are they sort of going to be too big to react you know is it going to be have have they become sort of a leviathan where they they're too slow to react you know will they be able for now right well as they pull in these smaller things will they have sort of arms and tentacles that they'll be able to reach forward and anticipate rather than just sort of be a couple of days behind well, I think so because, like now, you have the ultimate uh, proving ground, which sure. is NXT. Mm-hmm. They didn't have that. Mm-hmm. NXT has TV too. I mean, I can't think of any 
uh, developmental to have TV like that. Right, right. So it's kind of also awesome proving, proving ground. Right, and it's sort of, so, it's, if it's right. on TV, the audience will accept it. So, if, you know, if they put different people on that show, oh, well, I saw it on TV, it must be true. There's an element of that. So that will become yeah. even more quickly accepted. I happen to think that right. sort of using women as an analogy to this whole thing is actually kind of doing a disservice because there's no one that's going to disagree that really attractive athletic women wearing very little clothes on television that that has such a broad appeal so it's almost like they, they had it easy with that in a way this is actually more of a challenge i think and requires more thinking right. so it'll be really interesting to see how they try and maneuver this without looking like they're maneuvering it that's, that's a good point that's mm-hmm. a good point mm-hmm. um but and i think you know only time will tell how they handle it but uh, more on words. I can see Big E holding, holding the, the big scrap one these days. Let's keep our fingers big, crossed with Big E, big member e. of the New Day. That, that would be amazing if he became a world heavyweight uh, champion someday. Uh, I, I can see him holding the strap. I can see uh, Athena hold, holding the strap. You know, funny story. I remember when she uh, she did it the perfect way. Like, she moved around. And um, she kind of, like, you know, went, she went, she started in Dallas, you know, Kind of wrestled the same places. We used to travel together uh, to some some of our events together. Uh, Athens, Texas, you no know, Marshall, Texas, wrestling together. And I remember one of her first matches. She uh, one of the guys was like, "Hell, I can't follow that." <laughs> and uh, yeah, we were in Marshall, Texas, wrestling as hot as I mean, hot top building that had a uh, it had a it had a, a, a tin roof to it, so it kind of, so it absorbed heat. Mm. And this is Texas summertime. It's like July in Texas, so the building's like 110 degrees inside. And um, and she went in there, and she uh, she went. There's a girl. She wrestled. The girl she wrestled with was, was terrible, just terrible. But even then, she found it. I don't know, she found a way to pull out a good match out of it. The guys were like, "I can't follow that." And she went on like I think like mid middle of the show, you know. Wow. And um, uh, and. Uh, fast forward a little bit, she found a way to ACW in Austin, and once again, she pulling uh, matches out of people who shouldn't be in the ring. Even um, not showing the ring, I hate to say that. But people, everyone learns that everyone learns that at their own pace. But people who aren't experienced her um, in Texas, the gap between the best women wrestler and the second best women wrestler is so is so huge that sometimes it's like uh, it's like a lion playing with kittens. I hear that. And look at her now. I mean, you know, she's in NXT and, you know, she was even ranked in the, the PWI top 50. Right. Uh, so so right. here's somebody, once again, shout out to Ember Moon. Here's somebody who you've got a front row seat to see her progress from day right. one to even now. And, and she's doing well. Tell us, let me ask you, if if fans want to get in touch with you to talk wrestling, to, to talk just life in general, because you're you're a guy who has a pretty strong following and people really respect your opinion on a multitude of things. How can folks get in touch with you? Uh, Twitter is uh, underscore Prince uh, T'Challa, like the Black Panther. Uh, and then on, on Instagram is same thing, underscore Prince T'Challa, T-C-H-A-L-L-A. Hmm. And on Facebook, uh, no, tell us T-E-L-L-E-S-S, my last name, K-C-A-D-E. Cool, cool. And now what about your family? You want to give a shout-out to anyone special out oh, there? Oh, yeah. My wife, uh, with my crazy wrestling loving self, she don't she don't get it. She, she, she growing up, she didn't watch it even. That's oh. another example. A black people not watching wrestling. <laughs> um, she didn't watch it <laughs> um, in her household. Um, child of hers for being there and being there with me throughout this crazy ride. Good you know, stuff. At some point, we're gonna have to get the the wrestling wives on. We're gonna have to yeah. do a whole yeah. like eight month series. Can you on imagine talking that to all the, the the other halves of all these guys we talked to? Yeah, that yeah. ought to be interesting. I bet they have some stories, including your wife did tell us. Listen, tell us, Cade. I'm gonna tell you right now. I may be afraid of your drop kick, <laughs> but I respect you. Oh, likewise, man. I'm still I'm still drop kicking you though. Still <laughs> can you can but, we set that up? We'll talk off air about that. I'd like yeah. to see that. Maybe a little, okay. maybe that'd be like a Christmas card we oh, can send out to yeah. everybody. Uh, I'm let you know. I'm so accurate. I can I can fly off your nose. Oh, oh, oh boy, so. I better watch myself. Here. <laughs> Listen, tell us, can we have you come back sometime? Oh, most definitely. I enjoy them being with you guys. Excellent, excellent. We enjoy having you. Tell us, Cade, the man. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, the Boston Bad Boy has more of your listener submitted questions, aka Ask Duke. But before we get to 
any of that. I want to remind you to head over to Barnyard Cheese. That's right, Barnyard Cheese over at 149 Avenue C between 9th and 10th Streets in New York City. You know, Boston Bad Boy. Yeah. Last week, I told you about the Veggie Supreme. Yep. And, you know, we had to add two eggs to it because you balked at the fact that it didn't well, have enough you know, protein. No, no, I, you know, I just, ve- total veggie would not be my particular first choice. I'm sure it's delicious. But, you know, when you throw the leg in there, now it starts to, you know, See? appeal to me. Well, they got a little, a little something, something for everybody. A little something for everybody. Exactly. That's right. Well, this week, I'm really going to knock you off your socks because we're departing from the sandwiches again. And we're going to go over to one of the many delicious cheeses. Yeah. Okay. I'm talking about the now. Now you're gonna have to grade me my uh, Italian here. Oh, here. All right, here we go. Go ahead, go ahead. Come Sa- on. Sapore del Piave. I'm not looking at what you're looking at, but I'm gonna guess that's not correct. All right, well, hey, close listen, enough. Listen, I tried. Okay, <laughs> I, I you know I lived in East Boston for a little hey, while. Oh, I know a little something hey, about oh, this. Here. What are you part of the East Boston Mafia? <laughs> oh, watch out now. Watch out. <laughs> listen to this description. A mystical. Magical yeah. Italian powerhouse. Oh, that's usually that's my other nickname. Oh, you stop it right now. <laughs> Salty, nutty, and absolutely delicious. Mm-hmm. I've been called that. Oh, Co- we're talking about the sandwich. Yeah, Sorry, we're, t- we're talking about the cheese. <laughs> oh, the cheese. Yeah. Oh, right, right. solo cheese. Now look, this is good for grating, snacking, yep. what, whatever you desire. Okay. Now we're talking about raw, pasteurized Italian cow's milk cheese. Yeah. Stop depriving yourself of deliciousness. Visit barnyardcheese.com for more info. Enjoy. I just want to correct you, so now I'm looking at the yep, what yep. you're reading. I, I think it's Sapore del Piave. Del Piave. Pia, this is the Piave. I could be wrong. We're eventually we're gonna have a uh, we're gonna have to have somebody from Barnyard Cheese on yep. to correct all of the commercials we've ever done. Because I'm telling you, because <laughs> I think we're start we're getting into real uncharted territory. We're here. left to our own devices. That's and, right. And, this and is, we're just hungry. Hey, I can't think on an empty stomach. Barnyard Cheese. This is the pastor of wrestling, Kevin West, and I'm listening to Duke Love Wrestling. Wow, what a, what a serious uh, discussion we had there with Telus Cade. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, that's... It was interesting. You know, we don't often get into... I, I really like the mechanics of it. I'm really interested in the mechanics of, of, of business and sort of true motivations, you know? Of and, course. Uh, it's interesting to, to see sort of not only socially, but... Um, uh, I guess you know financially what what it's like to, you know, who are we trying to appeal to? Absolutely. And and, and what what um, example are we trying to set? Well, the main idea is that we're going to dig into the stuff that matters. Yeah. You know, and I that's agree. that's what you get here on the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast, folks. This isn't right, just because uh, we're not just arguing about sort of the soap opera aspect. Absolutely. Of things. I think that you know uh, there's a, there's a huge fan base. Uh, for wrestling that encompasses any every touches on every sort of socio-economic group, and uh, so, so I think there's it's really uh, uh, fitting that it should reflect certain things. Absolutely. And uh, you know, does it? And 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 the pushing the question of does it owe it to the to the viewers and to the fans to sort of be a trendsetter rather than just a follower? Listen, you, you, there's no way you can watch pro wrestling and not notice that right, yeah. the top guy, for the most part. Yeah. Looks a certain way. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny. I think that a lot of people, it just doesn't occur to them. Yep. Um, yep. And, and uh, you know, I think everyone owes it to themselves to just question. Just take a look. You take another look at things around, things you take for granted. All right. But I know that you're the conspiracy guy, well, so i got to yeah. be careful. <laughs> we, we don't want to question to the point where we go all the way over I've there. I've always told you that I, I do believe in the moon landing. Yeah. So I, I don't think, I do not think that that's a conspiracy. All right, here we go. Now, listen, I, I will say this, though. You were getting a little too buddy buddy with Telus Cade there, who who threatened to. What did he say? You're gonna drop kick. Dro- he said he could drop kick. I think a, a fly off the end of your nose. Oh, is that what he said? Yeah. So what and is he I, trying I to say? I asked him to nose? do it. Oh, yeah, you did ask him to <laughs> do it. I asked him to do you it. You sure Sorry, did. Yeah, yeah. Which you know, thanks a lot. So we're gonna have to set that up at some point. Oh yeah, please. I I will run. Listen, okay? I'll call Rudy Boy. He'll bring us the ring. Yeah, and then we'll get <laughs> Telus there, and we'll have it all set up. A big, big you event. You got it all figured out, don't you? I'm working on it. Oh my Buddha. Okay, you know something. Just because you said that, Uh-oh. I'm going to bring something up. Yeah. Well, I thought this is my part of the show. Well, wait. Well, you know, hold on here. Our our friend, one of our favorite listeners, Dingo. Oh, boy. Yeah. He's been laying it on thick on, on Twitter oh, yeah, about you. Yeah. Thick is the right word for it. Let, let me tell you what he said. Okay. Go ahead. And I quote, Dingo says, bring me the mouth known as the so-called Boston bad boy. Uh, yeah, yeah. He poked the wrong dingo. Wow. 
Yeah. Uh, n- the, the listeners can't see my face right now, but can you describe the look on my face? Uh, I mean, is there a way I could care any you, less about yeah, what the dingo has to say? Here's there. what I got to say to dingo. Uh-oh. Here's what I say to dingo. Be nice. All right? First of all, let me clear some up. Dingo Jr. had a great question last week, okay? I agree. The kid asked a very, and we had a nice conversation about it. What has Dingo brought to this show except controversy? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, no. He has not subjected anything to it worthwhile except poking me, and I don't stand for that crap. Secondly, Dingo got something to say to me? Get your own friggin' podcast, buddy, because I'm not even going to engage with you. Guess who has the microphone right now? This guy. Well, wait, okay? I, I, I want to bring Dingo on the show. No, absolutely. Because no. Yeah. I control who comes on this show. Well, hold on. His friends, they've been saying this is like a Boston, New York thing. Because Dingo, you oh, know, he, he's this a is, New York no, guy. This is a, this is a right versus wrong. I'm right. He's wrong. And he needs to get a hobby. Oh, no. And you know what a great hobby would be? Get a podcast. I'll listen to it. <laughs> but until then, I'm the guy with the microphone. Are you blackballing Dingo? No. He can do whatever he wants to do. Huh. I suggest he just finds a better use of his time than trying to start something with me. Because you know what? It ain't going to end well. Let me put it to you that way. But you like Dingo Jr. Dingo Jr. is great. And I think that his dad could learn a little something from Dingo oh, Jr. Oh, boy. All right, that's enough. That's enough. And I'm having a hard time keeping these alligators down. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right, all right. Can what we move you... on to like... This yeah, is so... It would get stopped by you. Dingo. See? God. See? I can't even. I, I, I can't even. You asked for it, pal. I did not. I'm doing my show. We're doing the show that we always do. Yeah. And Dingo wants to chime in. He wants to be on the show. But Dingo's... No, he doesn't get to be on the show oh, no. after he starts running his mouth down in New York. New York? Hey, you're the one who said he was going to eat somebody's We're international. Baby. That's right. It's right. We're big in what's Japan. New, what's New York t- talking to me about when I'm international? That's what I want to know. I'm sorry. Get your own podcast. I'm sorry, Dingo Jr. I'm sorry. I, listen, Dingo Jr. can come on the show anytime he wants. Oh, see? There Kid is. knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Asks thoughtful questions. Well, so does his dad. He contributes. So does his dad. No. All right. Get out of here. This Get out of here. Poor guy. All right, what do you have for, for the, the I don't know. You got me all aggravated here. here. You know, I'm not doing any listener submitted questions. What? What do you mean? Oh, no. no. I got something more. You, you got me going now. Oh, no. And this is actually an important thing, I think. And, uh, we're, we're going down the wrong path, folks. No, I think we're going down a good path. And I, 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 we're, we're, I've hijacked this whole thing to take over the past couple of weeks because of all the things going on in world news and my feeling that the WWE is involved. Uh-oh. Uh, at, at least on a consulting You can't term. let this up, let this go, can you? No, but I, wanted to, I want to tell you, and I put this on, on social media, when you posted that uh, Linda McMahon was potentially being considered for Secretary of Commerce in this the new true. administration. This is true. My comment to you, who called it? Yeah. And who agreed with me? <laughs> Everyone agreed with me. It is starting to look a lot like you know what you're talking about, Boston Bad Boy. Hello. It's it's getting scary Hello. now. Okay. You know, Trump is bringing in the wrestling Take people that, to Dingo. be part of his, uh, his cabinet. So, the thing is, though, I'm not happy about it. Because I, I don't believe the WWE always acts in the best interests of its fans or, or, or society. And I completely disagree with you, by the way. But yeah, okay. Obviously. Obvi- okay. Obviously. That's why you're going to get drop kicked by our buddy. Uh, t- shout out uh, to yeah. Vince McMahon. I, uh, Vince, you're go. always right. <laughs> oh, boy. You jock in for cabinet position, too? Yeah, I mean, hey, look. He works for Melinda. <laughs> Come on. So, you know Joey Styles. Yeah. No, look. All right. Hold on. Please That's tell me that you're this. not going there. No, no. Because I want to talk about that. I think it's important. This is the top wrestling news story, yeah. but be careful, okay? No, I listen, before we get into we're going to recap exactly where we're going, oh. but I want to say that I think that we're all on the same page here about content. Okay. I'm talking about behind the scenes. So we can all agree that it was an off-color joke. So here's what happened. So to, to simplify, to recap for anyone, Joey Styles, while commentating uh, on a match, makes an off-color joke, Okay. Uh, regarding uh, President Trump and his comments on the bus, the famous audio, which we do not need to recap. Mm. Everyone should know, and if you go look it up. Needless to say, it was disparaging towards women, okay? And we can all agree with that. Let's just say that's a given. It's a comment that shouldn't be on TV. We shouldn't be promoting that kind of thing, okay? But I want to talk about motivations. I want to talk about... uh, by, By... by censoring that kind of stuff, are we doing it because it's the right thing to do? And by we, I mean the WWE, or is there something behind it? So well, what this... happens is Joey Styles gets fired by the WWE. Okay. Right? A while ago. Yep. Okay? Yep. He gets hired by Evolve Wrestling. Now, Joey Styles is a guy, well-respected uh, commentator. Okay? 
gets fired. For w- I'm not exactly sure why, what the, what the, the circumstances were. I just think just that changing his time tides. was, yeah. Yeah, his time was They up. had him behind the scenes. He wasn't right. even on right, TV right, anymore. Right. So he goes to Evolve, which is a sort of a, a clearinghouse. Well, independent wrestling. It's an independent wrestling, right? Yeah. Um, and what no one knows initially, but comes out later, is that the WWE is an investor in Evolve, right? So basically he goes back to working for them in a roundabout way. So fast forward to now, and or, or this week, and Joey does his promo. Um, his ex- explanation is he's caught off guard. He was sort of ad-libbing, and it just kind of blurted out because it's what everyone's been talking about. Um, again, not a, I'm not making an excuse for the guy for using for picking that thing to say. Um, so he makes this reference to the the, the, tr- the now infamous Trump quote, and uh, he gets fired because of it. Oh, he sure did. He gets fired because of it. Okay? Immediately. Immediately. He immediately gets fired. Okay. So they say, okay, he said this thing was off color. So the, the question now is, why, why is he fired? Um, you know, couldn't there be an apology? People have been not fired for worse, you know, uh, in, 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 in different uh, avenues and genres. And uh, so why does he get fired? You tell me why they fire him. Well, look, the main idea is this. Joey Styles was told explicitly yep. to not make any political jokes. Now, keep in mind, the guy who runs Evolve is a friend of Joey's. They've okay. known each other for decades. My guess is the man knew that Joey would potentially say something ridiculous like what he said. So he, he headed him off. Look, Joey, whatever you do, no political jokes. Okay, I want it. So he says no political jokes. Yep. That's a loaded thing, because we all know who the biggest joke in politics is. Okay. So what that really means, that's coded for no Trump jokes. No Trump jokes. No Trump jokes. This is not no uh, Martin Van Buren jokes. Yep. This is yep. not no yep. Democrats versus... the. This is no Trump jokes. Leave the Trump stuff alone tonight. We're, right. This is our first pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. We're going to be on this independent um, streaming service for blah, blah, blah. the first... Yeah, so uh, look, let's just that. keep it PG. Yeah. No Trump jokes. Just keep it. Within and you know the what? That sounds that sounds so well and good. And I would totally buy into this whole thing of it's a feel good operation, if one of the investors in Evolve was not a guy who donated to the Trump campaign. Oh no, Vince McMahon, best buddies, best buddies with uh, President Elect Trump. What does that have to do with anything? It's a double standard. This is the WWE once again. Playing jealous girlfriend. I can't have you, but I'm not going to let you go. I'm going to mess. I'm going to f with you for the rest of your existence. You know what? It, it's Daniel Bryan all over. Again. Oh, well, oh, 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 time out, time. First of all, okay. First of all, who Vince McMahon donates money to? That's real life. Yeah. Okay. That's nobody's. This business. guy losing That's his real job life. is real life. Oh well, sure, of course. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we're dealing <laughs> we, real we life. We don't here. disagree with that here. But in the confines of a job, you're told not to do something. This guy was completely insubordinate. He completely went into business for himself, and he said something that he was absolutely told not to say. That's fine. So he I, should I, be fired. I Listen, I'm okay? not defending the guy. Hey. I'm not defending the... Uh, what I'm saying is the motivation here is not all sweet and nice, and we got to keep it for the kids. Well, who cares? This is... Don't make a Trump joke because our secret investors... Who now aren't so secret because of the law? Well, they're gonna they're gonna get they might pull the plug on this operation if you insult their little best buddy Trump and say he has small hands or something. Let's be careful when we when we call WWE Evolve investor. They're an investor in the streaming service uh-huh. which Evolve is oh, yeah. partnered with. Oh, interesting. So, yeah. So you don't. You, yeah, there, there haven't been any meetings in Vince's high office well, saying I'm 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 signing checks now. It's my way or the and highway. Triple H has been to Evolve shows and all that, but yeah. that's beside oh, yeah, the yeah, point. Yeah, that's yeah, not, not going to. That is know. the that's the actual point. All right. That's Here the actual go. point. Here we go. That's look. President elect Trump, who once received a stone cold stunner on la- on live television and also is in the WWE Hall of Fame, uh, cannot he's so fragile, he cannot be insulted or whatever. And again, the joke that was made, it didn't even insult him. But it brought to light something negative about our dear president elect. So sure. Vince, his buddy, didn't want that to happen and as an FU fired the guy. How dare you? How dare you? Listen. When you're told not to do something, okay, and you and you say, okay, you, you, if your boss tells you, do not go on the air with a hot mic, 
and say this thing, you don't do it. It doesn't matter what the motivation but, is. You don't do it. No, you don't but, go into business you're for playing yourself. The wrong, you're playing okay? the wrong game here. You're, play, you're not even on the level yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah, he is playing about. the wrong no, game. No, you're playing the wrong game. Oh. Anyone can see that Vince hates Joey Styles. Okay? No, no, he no, wasn't, no, listen, no, no. Listen, he fired him, right? Okay. And then Joey went someplace else. He didn't else. renew his contract. Whatever. <laughs> Call it what you want. Ask to resign. Uh, you know, early retirement. He just didn't renew his contract. Yeah, yeah didn't renew his right. contract. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a nice way of saying it. And then, so, he ends up at Evolve. Now that Vince has a stake in Evolve, and he can twist the knife, let's find some excuse. No. Let's find, because you know what? If it didn't happen then, it would have happened a week later with something else that he had said. Listen, Joey Styles has been around a long time. He is far too professional, far too intelligent to be making yeah. ridiculous mistakes like this. That's it was why a mistake. it's a conspiracy. It's not a conspiracy, okay? First of all, Styles penned an open letter where he apologized. He admitted that the, he went into business for himself on this. He said he made a mistake. He made a mistake, right. But so wait, that's wait. a pretty bad mistake I, when you're told not to do it. But the thing is, th they're hanging the guy out to dry here. Well, yeah. yeah. Here's, here's, He's blackballed now, you well, know. Here's the thing. Other promotions are saying they're not going to hire him either. You know you know who, who hasn't gotten fired for saying disparaging things about women? The president-elect of the United States. Oh, Lord. Okay? So you who know. is Vince McMahon going to take some big moral stand <sighs> against this guy and fire him when he d donated money to this the, the other one? The original. The original offender. Get you, out of here. You, you know crazy. what? Vince McMahon, please don't beat me up. I don't know oh, what's yeah, wrong yeah. with this guy, but I'm pulling the plug. I, I am just you can't pull beside the plug on myself. Are you ding I run the show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to pull a dingo and pull a plug on you. I'm beside myself. Hey, listen, Joey Styles, we love you, pal. But listen, don't go into business for yourself. It's really as simple as that. When they tell you not to do something, I don't care who you want to blame. When they tell you not to do something, you just don't do it. it again, it's not about that. It's, it's unprofessional. About the, uh, again, it's the Daniel Bryan thing. You're going to be injured, but we're not going to let you. We're not going to let you leave. We're going to hold on to you. Unbelievable. I, well, he could go to Jap Japan wrestling. No, no, no. We're going to just make you some middle manager in our system. It's absolute madness, folks. Like I said, I'm pulling the plug on this guy. Thank you to Telus Cade for joining us this week, folks. Head over to Facebook, Twitter. YouTube, iTunes, Duke Loves Wrestling. We'll be back next week, and hopefully the Boston bad boy can get a hold of himself. Shout out to Dingo and Dingo Jr., by the way. What's wrong with you, man? I, I'm just I mean, telling why you, are you listen, talking I'm about Vince McMahon in this manner? Listen, the guy, right. yeah, he Joey made his Styles own bet. He's going to slip in it. Anyway.